Hey y'all, this is Chris, and this is your 2022 Interstate Grand Tour. We're gonna to start right here under the hood. Like a typical vehicle, the initial hood release is gonna be on the driver kick panel. The secondary hood release is just to the left of the Mercedes sign, and you simply wanna push up. We're gonna come over here to the left. We're gonna catch it with this little rod. Now, under the hood here, you're gonna see the intake for the air conditioner. On the new model, they've done away with the filter. We've got the engine coolant here, and this is where you would add oil to the engine. The oil filter is actually over here under a little cap, but being a Mercedes, there's no dipstick to check that underneath the hood. You're gonna actually check that on a gauge on the dash. Now, this diesel vehicle will require a diesel emissions fluid. It has a 4.7 gallon tank. Should give you somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 miles worth of range. There is a gauge on the dash that has two options. You can set it up so that you can wash it all the time or so that it's on the reserve. When it comes up on the reserve, you still have nearly 5,000 miles worth of range and that's how I would suggest you set it up. Engine air filter here. Down here under this little blue cap is where you'll fill the washer fluid. You've got the positive jump start point here and against the fender you'll find the negative jump start point and this is for the engine battery. The engine battery is in the driver foot well but you've got to take about 10 bolts out and a couple of pans. So <clears throat> just to make it easy on you guys, if you need to add a jump start cable or a trickle charger, they do recommend you add it under the hood. I do want to mention that the shore cord, the cable that you're going to power the house part of the van with is also going to charge the engine battery and there are 400 watts of solar panels on the roof one of those 400 or one 100 watt solar panel is dedicated to charging the engine. The last thing we'll see under here are gonna be the manual ports for adding air to the rear air suspension. The only time you would ever use these is if the onboard air compressor has failed. When you're going to close the hood, don't just grab it and pull it down. You'll end up bending this rod. I want you to lift it up, return the rod to its little keeper, and then you can let it slam down just a little bit so it's actually latched. Down here on the bumper, you're gonna find a little spot where you can step on it if you need to wash the window or maybe change the windshield wipers. Brian, we're gonna come around the corner here. In the driver compartment, I wanna talk about just a couple of things real quick. The first is gonna be your diesel fill. So this is where you'll add diesel fuel to the unit. Please make sure you are using diesel fuel. Um, this does not run well off of gasoline. 24 and a half gallon tank on that unit and it is designed so that you can fill it and close the door so that way the fumes don't get into the house portion. I also want to mention that they've done away with the assist switch that's going to connect to the house and the chassis battery in lieu of a trickle charger coming in from the shore court. And they've also moved the door unlock and the heated seats to the door itself instead of on the center of the dash. We're going to go over the rest of the dash here in a little bit when we're getting closer to the end of the walkthrough. The next thing we'll have is the exhaust for the furnace. Now these furnace exhausts are susceptible to mud daubers, especially down here in Texas. We sell a couple of screens that you can cover those with and keep those bugs out of there. And I will typically install them if you purchase them on your day of delivery. Next to that is the fill port for the onboard fresh water tank. And it's really similar to the ones that you're gonna see on the trailer. So you just stick your water hose in here and fill it up. There are several ways to monitor the status of this. There are three displays for the Firefly, one inside the main entry door, and then of course, one in here in a cabinet. The easiest way to do it is just stand in the entry and watch the level of your water tanks as you're filling and emptying them. Now I do recommend again that you cycle through the water every two weeks to 30 days. On this trailer, the drain is actually gonna be just a plug on the bottom of the water tank. The water tank is right here behind the entry door, and it's a simple black plug right there on the bottom, 25 millimeter. Next, we're gonna have an outdoor shower. So we've got a little rubber hose in a box in the back that you can connect to that. That way, if you've been running around the river or at the beach and you're a little muddy, you can hose yourself off before you track that mess inside. And then we've got two ports for your service. So you've got the control panel. And then down below here is where they're gonna store your sewer hose. So when you're doing your waste clean out on these vans, you want to pull the hose out. You're going to place this end in the appropriate receptacle and you're going to parallel this valve. Now, if you'll look in here, you'll see a little water port. 
This is your waste clean out valve. So you can attach a water hose here and it's gonna put water directly into the black waste tank. That's where the toilet empties and it's gonna help you flush that one out. So connect your water hose here and come back over here to the control panel. You wanna open the black valve. You'll be able to hear when it's all the way open and then you're gonna turn on a pump and you're actually gonna pump the waste out. With the black valve, make sure you've got the fresh water coming in, turn the pump on and you'll notice that the water comes pumping out of this hose and it will go from muddy to clear. So you've got fresh water coming in the top and the waste water's coming out in the bottom. I want you to pump that waste water out until you see the fresh water coming out after that. So I want you to pump it out until it's clean. Once that one's clean, you'll hear, I'm sorry, once the flow goes clear, turn the water off and then listen for the pitch on the pump to change. It'll go from kind of a low pitch to a high pitch and when it does, I want you to turn it off, close the black tank valve, and then you can do the gray tank. You always do the gray tank second. The gray tank is gonna have soapy water from your sinks and showers. By doing it second, it's gonna help wash this hose out. With the gray tank, you simply turn the pump on and pump the waste water out. <clears throat> Listen for the pump to change when it goes from low pitch to high pitch. Start watching the hose itself and when you see the water chug through it, turn the pump off. Do not run the waste pump without water coming through it because over time, the heat from running the pump is gonna cause it to burn out. When the, gray valve, when the gray tank is clean, simply close the valve. All you do on that one is just pump the water out. And then when you go to return the hose, I want you to wind it back and forth across the drum so that it sits on there nice and flat. Now in the service compartment, you've got a light switch this little service light button here. That'll turn on the light in all four of these service compartments. And you also have your cable inlet here. So if you're staying at a campus site and they offer a cable service, you can connect it here and you can run it through the little window on the door. When we get inside, I'll show you how to get the signal to pass through onto the TVs. Heading back this way, we've got your city water connection. So this is where you'll connect your water hose at your campus site for your on-demand water. Airstream city water connections have built-in water pressure regulators. They're 50 PSI, so you do not need to add an external pressure regulator. They're also plumbed through the onboard water pump. So if you're staying at a campus site that has very weak water pressure, you can turn on the onboard water pump and it's gonna boost the pressure at the faucets. But the city water feeds the faucets directly. It does not fill the fresh tank first and then feed the water from them. Next to that, you're gonna have the exhaust for the water heater. Down below, you've got the exhaust for the furnace. And in between those, you're gonna have the camp power. Now this is gonna be a 30 amp van. This is the shore plug that comes with the van. It's 25 feet long. These smart plugs have caps. So when you pull them out, you can cap the ends off to keep dirt and debris out of it when you're storing it. Simply attach it like so. We're gonna come around to the back. Now I do wanna mention down here, you have a two inch receiver with a 5,000 pound tow capacity. There is also a seven pin plug for your lights, but if you need to run a trailer that has brakes, you will have to add an external brake controller. We're gonna open the doors. And they will open all the way around like this. And actually magnet, no, nope. there we go. They don't magnet to the side anymore, but they will fold flat around the side of the unit. On this door though, you wanna make sure that you don't let it get in the way of the awning as the awning is coming in or out. So just make sure when you're running the awning in or out that you've got this one out of the way. Back here, I wanna mention you're gonna find the headrests for the lounge, and then this is the bracket that you'll rest them on. These headrests go like this. So you just kinda of set them in place there. You will need to remove the travel headrest to get these in place. They aren't required. In this black case are the front window visors. And in this box is gonna be the hose for your outside shower. You've got a hose for the propane port, which we'll talk about in just a minute. And then this van is gonna come with your 15 amp drop. So this will allow you to plug into any standard wall plug. It's gonna allow you to keep the van charged, get the fridge cold before you're headed out. It will not allow you to run the air conditioner. Now it's hard to see from back here because it's not down, but there is a screen 
a bug screen that's going to drop down from the ceiling and it just drop all the way down to the floor and you can see where the channels are right here. Make sure that if you're using that screen that you don't have anything blocking it like luggage. All right, we'll come around the corner here. We've got an external AC port, just your standard 15 amp. Next to that, you've got HDMI out and cable out. And these allow you to run a little television if you're tailgating. Below that, you've got your LP service. From the left to the right, you've got the bleeder and the fill valve. That is for adding LP to the unit. It does have a 40 pound tank. There is an external port here that's gonna feed off that tank that you can use that little rubber hose, connect that to this, and it's gonna allow you to power a little space heater or maybe even a propane grill, but it is pre-regulated and it's regulated for a low pressure service. So whatever device you're using, will need to be compatible with that low pressure service. And then the silver switch all the way on the right is how you'll enable the propane on the system, on the unit. So the propane is gonna power the generator, the furnace, the water heater, and the range on this unit. But you will need to make sure you have the switch turned on to do so. Finally, we have the exhaust for the engine. Now, <clears throat> this door is automatic, so just pull on the handle and it's gonna open on its own. Step's gonna come right out. We've got another bug screen here. Make sure that this is open when you go to close the slide door. The slide door tucks in right at the end and when it does, it's gonna knock that off its channel. Now, as we come in here, I wanna mention that you've got the master battery disconnect switch here by the entry door. This is how you turn the unit off for storage. And then you also have a step hold. We're gonna turn the step hold on. We're gonna close the entry door and you'll see that the step stays out. So if you've been staying in the unit overnight, that'll save you a few moments of possibly tumbling out of the van waiting on that step to come out when you're groggy and you're not paying a lot of attention. Now, I wanna mention that this is just a repeater panel for the Firefly. We're gonna find another one just like this in the rear, but the main panel is gonna be up behind me in the cabinet. The biggest difference between the two panels is that they take the home screen and divide it into two pages. So page one and page two. And then you've got your lights. There is an automated generator start, climate control, window shades, and settings. We're actually gonna go over this just behind me in this cabinet up here. Now, before we get onto the Firefly control panel, I wanna talk about the things that are surrounding it. Starting at the right here, you've got your battery heaters. This van has lithium batteries and those batteries are cold sensitive. So if it's less than 30 degrees outside, you wanna make sure you turn the battery heaters on to keep the full capacity of your batteries. Above that, you've got your solar monitoring panel. Like I mentioned, there are 400 watts of onboard solar, 300 watts charging the house battery and 100 watts charging the engine battery. But the solar system in this van is automatic. So there's nothing that you need to do to make it function. It's gonna work automatically. Moving past the Firefly over here, we've got your power control station. Currently we're on the shore power. Everything is powered. You will notice, and I'll show you here in just a minute when they fire up the generator, that even though we're plugged into the shore service, the generator is gonna be the priority. So when we fire the generator up, it's actually gonna take over from the shore service, but it doesn't pass the power through immediately. It takes just a few moments, and we'll talk again about that in just a moment. Below that, we've got the inverter control. Now I know there's lots of buttons on here, but there's only one on here that you'll ever have to push, but you may end up having to push it twice, and that is this inverter on-off button. So if you're boondocking and you wanna power the televisions, you need to turn the inverter on if you cannot use the generator. But you do have to push the button twice because when you push the button the first time, it just turns the backlight on, and the second time will actually turn the inverter on. This van does have a 1,000 watt inverter and it's gonna be good to power the TVs um, when you can't use the generator. Now we'll talk about the Firefly screen. This is the home screen and this is why they divided it into two because the main control panel is twice as wide. This has got the light master, but this is just the interior light master. So on and off is only gonna turn on the inside lights, but there is a dim and a cinema mode. The cinema mode's gonna also draw the shades down. So it's kind of setting the TV up, I'm sorry, setting the van up so that you can watch TV. We're gonna skip over here to the lights for just a minute. Nope, that wasn't the lights, this is the lights. Now I do wanna mention that when you hit the master, two things, the outside lights stay on, 
and any lights that had been turned off will also stay off when you turn it back on. However, you can reset all the lights by holding your finger on the on switch. It's going to turn everything on at full brightness. From here, we can extend and retract the awning. The awning was already out, so we're going to simply press retract, and it's going to come right back in. Now below the awning control, you'll see it says rear screen up and down. That is a bug screen in the back. But before we go to draw this down, I'm actually gonna shift over here to the shades and I'm gonna bring all the shades up. They were left down from putting it in cinema mode. We'll bring it up so that you can actually see that rear screen, screen start to come down. So all the shades coming up. And now I'll hit the rear screen down button and you'll see the rear screen start to drop down in the back. Again, you wanna make sure that that's not blocked by any luggage. But you can use this on a cool evening with the entry door open, get a nice breeze coming through the van, keeps the bugs out. Now below that is gonna be the HVAC display. You can change the target temperature here. This is your internal temperature. And when you're using the HVAC, you'll get a little icon here that'll let you know what it's running on. So like a little snowflake for the air conditioner, a little flame looking thing for the furnace. Up here on the right hand side, you've got your tank monitors. Fresh tank is 18% full, gray is 15%, black tank is empty, propane is also full. On the bottom of all the water tanks are tank heater pads. Turn this button on and it will keep the water in there from freezing. You will need to power the water heater from here initially, and you can also turn the water pump on here. Now this is an on-demand water pump, so it's going to pressure up and stop, and it's going to hold that pressure until you create a demand. Start and stop the generator from here. There is an automated generator set up but you can just manually start it. You gotta hold your finger on the button. And once it fires up, you'll notice over here that it's gone from 30 amp to generator service. So the generator is the priority for power. Now, the thing I wanna mention about that is if you're plugged into your short service, you've got the air conditioner going and you're getting it ready for your camping site, when you go to turn the generator on, it takes a few minutes for the power to pass through. So the air conditioner will turn off and then within three to five minutes, it will come back on on its own. One way you can tell that's fixing to happen is the microwave will beep once it gets power. So we're actually gonna turn that off. And then of course, it's gonna give you your chassis battery display and the house battery as well. So we've already been over the lights. This is the automated generator setup. Now there are two triggers for that. You've got a low voltage trigger and an HVAC trigger. So with the low volt trigger, you can set this up to start the generator at 12 and a half volts, runs for a total of 240 minutes or until it reaches 13.9 volts. There is a quiet time that you can set up so that way if you're staying somewhere where they limit the time that you can use the generator, it won't accidentally come on. And then there's the HVAC load. So that basically sets it up so that when the air conditioner comes on, the generator turns on, charges up, Air conditioner comes on, drops the interior down to the target temperature, and then the air conditioner shuts off and the generator turns off. After that, we've got the HVAC. We're going to turn the air conditioner on. Notice when we do that, the overhead vent fan is disabled. There's your little snowflake icon, and you'll see that it is here on the home screen as well. One thing I do recommend on this is when you go to switch from the air conditioner to the furnace, you actually turn it off here. Turn the target temperature up over ambient and then turn the furnace on. That'll help the furnace kick in a little faster, but you'll notice the air conditioner doesn't shut off immediately. It takes just a few minutes, and it can take up to seven or eight minutes for the furnace to finally kick back on too. Remember, the furnace is propane powered, so you need to at least have the um, propane service turned on. This unit will not have a heat pump function on the air conditioner, so you are limited to air conditioner or furnace, but of course they both work when you're plugged into the house power, I mean the shore service the generator is on, and the furnace will work when you're boondocking. Below that, or after that, rather, well, let me back up for just a second. You've got the manual vent fan here. So it's an exhaust fan, it draws the air out. Even though it doesn't have the sticker on there, it does have a rain sensor. So if it starts to rain, it's gonna close it on its own. But don't drive the van with the vent open. The lid itself is made of plastic and 
driving out there in the wind is going to cause some damage to it. After that, we've got the, sh the shades. Now, on these 2022 model vans, they've done away with the dual shades. So you just get a single night shade. You can draw them all down at the same time, or of course, you can do them individually. All right, bring it back up. Let me slip past you. All right, now here we've got the lounge control. You do not want to operate all three switches at the same time. If you do, you'll end up bursting the fuse. So you do the lounge first. And then we can start to extend the sides. Remember, there are those optional headrests that you can remove the travel headrest and extend the end of the bed about six inches there as well. So we'll fold the lounge back in. Let me step over here and pick up this little cushion extension so it slides back in. All right, now we've got the range here. Just take the knob and turn it over here to the flame and click the igniter. Remember this lid is still made of tempered glass, so give it a chance to cool before you close it. Uh, let's see, actually we're gonna back up here for just a second. So this is an electric fridge. It's an AC-DC fridge, so if you're plugged into the shore service, it's already running off of AC. Pull that plug, it's gonna switch over to the batteries. You don't have to do anything to make that happen. Remember, these fridges have these little travel tabs that are help keep the door shut as you're towing. You can use those when you're storing it to help prop that door open. These take two to three hours to get completely cold. I do recommend you plug it in, get it cold overnight on your AC power. If it is completely cold without an external power source, meaning you've got the house batteries turned off, it will stay cold in there for five or six hours. But if you leave the house batteries on, because this runs off of those house batteries and the alternator is charging the batteries as you're driving, if it was completely cold, it shouldn't draw the house batteries down further than the alternator can charge it back up. Over here is where I've hidden the remotes. These vans come with AC power testers. The little ratchet and the extension are how you will return the awning if you've lost power. And of course, you've got two TV remotes and the remote for the forward uh, monitor for the rear view camera. Microwave here. Also has a little travel tab keeping the door shut. This microwave is power. Well, power door open. So you can do that or you can just kind of push it. Remember, the microwave is only available when you're running it off of the shore power or when the generator is running. We're going to step in the bathroom for just a second. All right. Now, we'll show you how to flush the toilet real quick. There's a lever here on the right hand side. A partial, partial step is going to fill the bowl. Full step flushes. Chemical goes straight down into the toilet. There is still the little clothesline in here that you can stretch across and tighten down. Remember, it's only good for your bathing suits or your dish towels. You've got a manual vent fan. This one gets pushed open. Little red button is going to turn it on and off. And then the shower itself is going to hang up here on the wall when you're trying to hose yourself off. All right, right back out of here. So back here, we've got another TV on a travel bracket. So if you pull the little nylon strap, you'll be able to position that where you can see it a little better. And then another repeater panel for the Firefly. And then the last thing I want to show you back here is the low point drains. And they're over here under the cup holder on what they call the curbside, but what you might call the passenger side. 
So you're gonna see a couple of little black valves all the way down. I'm sorry, on this one, they're white. So the white valves that are pointed towards the driver's side are the low point drains. You see them in there, Brian? Way down there at the bottom. Oh yeah. And then we'll come up here into the driver compartment. Now, in the driver compartment, the first thing I wanna talk about is the European style parking brake. European style means you can lift it up, engaging the parking brake, push it down with the parking brake still engaged, and that is gonna allow you to swivel the seat. Now, when you go to swivel the seat, run it forward enough to clear the B pillar, but when you do turn this, only turn it 180 degrees. If you turn these seats 360 degrees, you're gonna end up pulling the wire that feeds into the airbag loose, triggering a light on the dash. So we've got a lever up here in the front. It's gonna pull towards you, and then you'll be able to swivel the seat. And then, of course, when we want to disengage the parking brake, simply lift it back into position, push the button, and disengage it. Now, <clears throat> turn the ignition on. Push that up. You're going to control this display right here through these two buttons on the stern wheel. This is going to be the back button. And this will be the scrolling button. So over here on service, diesel emissions fluid is full. Engine oil is full. You got to have the engine on to check. And there is also a particulate filter in the exhaust, currently 14% full. Once it hits 100% full, it's gonna do a regen. I am gonna suggest that if you can, do your best to continue to drive during that regen. If you stop, it will prolong the time that it does that regen. But it's basically cleaning out the exhaust filter. Back up a couple times, you got your driver assist. This is a Mercedes function. Trip odometer here. So this one has 33.8 miles. It's got your current fuel mileage, your overtime fuel mileage, two trip odometers, so one and two, and also a digital speedometer. Navigation here, radio, media, and phone. All set up on this screen, but this is basically just the display. I will mention you can control the phone when your phone is paired through these buttons over here on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. Finally, in settings, we have two options. You're gonna have the vehicle options, which are the sensitivity of the windshield wiper, rain sensor. And then display and operation is the way that you can set the diesel emissions fluid gauge on the dash permanently. So over here on permanent, pops the diesel emissions fluid gauge up at the bottom. I do recommend leaving it in reserve. It will pop up there on the bottom. When it hits that reserve, you still have nearly 5,000 miles worth of range. Moving over here. Pair your phones here. That's the little code you'll see. Navigation. To set the navigation up, enter all of the address information on the same line. The radio is pre-wired for Sirius XM radio. When you got your phone connected, you can control it here. Some vehicle information. So that was the cameras. So this is gonna be the transmission temperature, the engine oil temperature, the battery voltage for the engine battery, and then when you're actually driving, it'll tell you your horsepower and your torque usage. Fuel mileage over time. So apps, you've got a smartphone control and a browser when you're connected to the Wi-Fi. The settings are gonna be the vehicle settings. So this is your traction control, your park distance, your lane departure. The default for all these is gonna be on from here. You could turn them off if you wanted to. This is how you set up the driver assistance screen over here. Vehicle options are gonna basically be, does the horn long, honk when you lock the doors? Do the lights flash? Lights or how long do the lights stay on as you're entering and exiting the vehicle? And finally in the system, this is how you set up this display panel. Down below, you've got your air conditioner that does have an automatic mode to turn it off Take the fan control and simply press down until it says off. And then hazard lights in the middle. This button right here is gonna open and close the main sliding door. Down below, you've got a mini USB port, your standard round DC. 
And there is a home slot down below. So every once in a while, when you haven't used one of the key fobs, it's gonna ask you to place it in the home slot. You'll simply slide it into the gap right there at the bottom. The last thing I wanna mention is there is some more mini USBs up here at the top, but none of them will charge your phone. There is the standard 12 volt adapter and there is inductive charging right here. So if your phone is compatible with inductive charging, you can place it right there and it'll keep your phone charged as you're headed down the road. All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about is the house radio. Now this radio is powered from the house batteries. We're gonna turn it on here. It's also able to be paired with your phone. Go here, select Bluetooth, give it a moment to load up. Now I will mention when you're connecting it with your phone, the little code that's gonna appear on your phone is right here on the top right, MSRA70. All right. In order to select device, you will have to make it discoverable first. Once you do that, this little code will pop up on your phone and it's gonna pair up. It's gonna allow you to pull any music that you've got on your phone out and play it through the speakers. Let me go here, give it back to the radio and we'll turn it off. All right, so the last thing we'll talk about is the rear view camera. Now, the only thing about this is that when you do turn on one of the blinkers, it's gonna shift over to the camera that's in the mirror. So there's the right hand side, turn the blinker off, goes right back to the rear view camera. And then the left hand side, we'll get a nice look at that 24X. Well folks, that's gonna be the end of the walkthrough. So thank you very much for your time. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or have any recommendations on content you'd like to see, make sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoy our content, give us a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Airstream ADFW.